Hey guys, Jason Shellcross from the Fantasy Football Sackos here. Coming to you again. Let's keep talking about some fantasy football. Why not? What else you got to do? Um, Alex and I got a great show lined up for you today. We're going to be talking about our top quarterbacks for this season. Spoiler alert, Lamar and Mahomes are one and two, but in what order? Oh my goodness. (laughs) <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun discussion. I'll give you a hint. It's going to be Tana thrilling. <laughs> oh, Alex is going to kill me. Um, stick with us. We got a great show. Let's go. Welcome to the fantasy football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shawcross and Alex Krog. Let's go! All right, here we go. Two for one special. Jason Shawcross, Alex Krog, back again. Uh, second pod this week. We got a good one for you. We're going to be talking about uh, quarterback rankings and doing some light, light arguing. They don't matter. <laughs> they don't, don't matter. matter. What, are you already right and I'm already wrong? Yep. Quarterbacks, <laughs> they don't, literally don't matter. Oh, that's, 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 I think that's a little too far. You don't think quarterbacks matter at all? You could actually literally hit the stop button on this recording because it doesn't matter. Wow. That, that's, the, that's the end of the pod. There all right, you. hold on. No, that is not the end of the pod. Uh, eventually, when we monetize this in a that year. That was a minute long. And when we monetize this in a year, we're going to need to hit certain certain windows for our listeners we people, can't tell them to stop listening people love one minute podcasts and is so, that the new hotness yes 40 seconds of intro commercials 40 seconds of outro and one minute of loving man wow welcome to the fantasy football sackos podcast four still have not self-canceled Still going strong, and, and I have. We're trying some different audio this week, so hopefully people can hear me better. Hopefully people hear the both of us better. Hopefully we, uh, yeah, hopefully we get that sorted out. We know all you listeners that you know podcast audio is like the the holy grail. It doesn't really matter what the video content looks like. Everybody is so focused on producing high quality audio. Hopefully now we've we've got that situation sorted out. Um, Anyways, let's let's talk football. So before before I tell you how wrong you are, um, well, there's there's a little nugget of news today, and any of our social media followers already know. Um, both the Philadelphia Eagles and Tampa Bay Buccaneers have offered Mister. I'll sit out if my contract's not where I want it to be contract guy a contract and that person being Devonta Freeman now how would you feel if the Eagles or the Buccaneers signed Devonta um talk to me in four months I no well too, it's just too early like yeah I mean it's probably too early to determine what he'll do because uh, I mean, he could get cut before the beginning of the year, depending on how much they pay him and if he's fitting into the team. And if, you know, th- there's just a lot of different factors that could go into it. So I'll give you I that. Mean, th- 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 theoretically, it hurts, you know, everybody on every team if they have a running back and they sign him. You know, yeah. it's, it, it doesn't matter what team he goes to. If he takes away any carries from the number one guy, um, then yeah. it's, go- it's going to be a problem. So regardless of where he goes potential issues however i will also say that he's more than a reliable backup and if somebody were to get hurt uh he'd be somebody that you want on your bench to replace the starter with so uh you know if if he ends up in another or creating another running back by committee i know you named off like 12 to 15 guys last week sure or yeah just a couple days ago so um, you know, if, if he goes to any of those teams where you have sole number one guys, um, then values definitely, uh, reduce for whatever team he ends up going to. Yeah. And I'll add a little bit onto that. So if you guys listen to our first podcast, we talked about our top rookies for this upcoming season. Keyshawn Vaughn was mine. 
And uh, I think it's needless or it goes without saying that if the Buccaneers signed Devonta Freeman, bye bye, you know, I think then I would move all of my chips from Keyshawn Vaughn over to the Clyde Edwards Hilaire pool if I could. You, if you, you pretty much already have anyway. I mean, he's pretty good. He's he's all right. And and we already if you listen to our last podcast, discussed how much of a bum Damian Williams is. Um, but. So I think it's a split split time with either of them. Uh, if you are an Eagles fan or if you've had an Eagles player the last few years, Eagles running back. I don't know if I'm a glutton for punishment, but I had Josh Adams a couple years ago and I had the Miles Sanders experience last year. Um, you know, just a little bit to be desired, desired, excuse me. Josh Peterson is such a fan of committees. He just puts one, pulls one in. Pulls one out, puts one in, moves them around, changes up who's in the goal line. It's all over the place. Even when Miles Sanders was the lead back after Jordan Howard went down last season, I was still a little disappointed with how much work Boston Scott ended up getting. And then you put Devonta on that team. I'm out of Eagles running backs probably completely. Um, I think Miles Sanders is is an above average running back anyways. I wouldn't say that he's... I, I don't think he's a top 10... like skill wise in the league. So you put and that's where he's there. getting drafted essentially is is somewhere in that he's getting drafted at his ceiling yeah. for me and Correct. yeah. There's I don't think there's really any value there. Not that yeah. there's necessarily value in the first round, but I think that's his ceiling where he's going. Yep. Um all right, well, we got the news out of the way. Uh so today we're talking about our top 12 quarterback rankings. Are we still going to be friends? Alex and I are going to go in a little bit. We got some, we're going to play nice for a few picks. And then I think it's, uh, it's not going to, it's not going to be pretty after about pick three. So (laughs) (laughs) Alex, why don't you tell me why Lamar Jackson is the number one quarterback this year? Uh, I think he's one B. Okay. And who's one A? It's Pat Mahomes, uh, and, I, and I have a I have a very logical reason why Mahomes is number one A and Lamar Jackson's one B. Okay. I know we talked talked a lot about all of Lamar's rushing yards and being worth that that potential second round pick um, a couple episodes ago, but for me, and this is this is completely logical. The reason why I have Mahomes over Lamar Jackson is because Lamar Jackson is the cover athlete on Madden this year. Oh, oh, Alex, you did not just do that to me. Does that, does that change your thinking? Oh, no. <laughs> I, ladies and gentlemen, before we started recording, Alex said that he has the greatest, most logical reason for why Mahomes is going to be the number one quarterback this year, but he wouldn't tell me what it was. And now come to find out it is the most logical make sense point that anybody could have ever made. Oh man. Who was last year's cover cover athlete? Didn't they it, break it? it? it no, it, it was Mahomes who won uh, the Super oh, Bowl. Well, but oh, he, he was hurt for a little bit in there. So like Yeah, I mean who needs a kneecap? Uh um, yeah. Yeah. Uh Todd Gurley does actually. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to our last podcast, you need to be you need to get starting running backs that have knees, ladies and gentlemen. All right. <laughs> Well, I'm going to go over, I'm, I can't talk about one without really talking about why the other or why yeah. I have Lamar over Pat Mahomes, because to me, Lamar Jackson is by far and away the number one uh, quarterback this season. And I, I got some fun stats for all these guys and we're, we're going to, we're going to talk about it. So Lamar so Jackson. Be, so hold on, just, just before you get going, I, I do want to say that stats are a dangerous thing. And yeah. and I and I'm guilty of it just as well. Much as yeah, you, are. you drafted Pat Mahomes early last year, and uh, I don't know. Didn't yeah, work but out. as right as we're going through this though, over the next however long we're going to be talking, stats can be used to mislead to make your point. And so, like, you're only going to bring up positive things about the guys that you like, and you're not going to talk about anything negative. And for people that you're going to crap on, like you were going, you're planning on crapping on Jared Goff, I'm pretty sure later, that you're only going to talk about 
negative things because you can twist and turn statistics any way you want. So are, I, we, I just wanted, are we preemptively calling the Jason Shellcross newscast fake news? Is that what's I, going no, on right I'm now? Not, no, all of these are facts. There, there is nothing fake about it. I'm just saying that you can take any statistic and twist and turn and dissect it any way you want to make your point. So I, I just think it's important, and it goes for all of our conversations about all of the players, that we're only going to be saying good things about people we like, and we're only going to be saying bad things about people we don't like. So just as a point of reference for people, you can't just take one statistic and make it the end all be all for any player because there's so much more going on. So I just there is a lot out there, there, but I have a whole heck of a lot of goodness about Lamar Jackson. So all right. So go go ahead and start your nine pages of statistics you have for the next. 40, I, it, 40 it's minutes. just it's a couple bullet points about each player. But so Lamar Jackson, again, easiest schedule this year. Playoff schedule is at the Browns at home against Jacksonville at home against the Giants. The Giants gave up the third most points to fantasy quarterbacks last year or third most fantasy points to quarterbacks last year. Uh, Their offensive line was rated second overall. They gave up the ninth lowest pressure rating. So the the ninth fewest pressures uh, in the league last year. Uh, They have the third ranked defense going into the season. His consistency last year. Let me talk to you about freaking Lamar Jackson's consistency. Give it to me. In 16 games, he only had two games out of 16 where he put up less than 20 points. In the remaining uh, 14, or excuse me, 13 games, because he sat out the last game of the season, in the remaining 13 games, six were scored between 20 and 30 points, and seven times Lamar Jackson scored more than 30 points. More than double. The next guy. So we already talked about it. If you want the, you know, why you should draft Lamar Jackson, it's because you've listened to us talk about Lamar Jackson on the podcast titled Don't Draft Lamar Jackson. He's insane. (laughs) He's the uh, the 15th overall running back and only five running backs had more rushing yards than he did last season. Take take the you know, take 25% of the rushing yards away. He's still the quarterback one. I mean, Pat Mahomes a year before uh, outscored Lamar Jackson by a whopping two points. If you look, you know, Lamar's year list last year and Pat Mahomes year two years ago, but Pat Mahomes had to throw 50 touchdowns to do it. And I think that the rushing yards are a lot more repeatable than the, the touchdowns. And then I, I have Pat Mahomes at two, you know, I think that's, the consensus really has him, I think, in the top two, or maybe some people have Dak in the top two, but really those are the top three guys. I have Mahomes at two. Um, he out of his out of the games that he played, seven out of thirteen, he scored less than twenty points in, so more than half. He and and people say, well, well, he was injured, or maybe that was at the end of the season. In the three games leading up... Hey, that's not my voice. Just for the record, that was Jason <laughs> pretending to me. I me. just wanted to point that out. No, I wouldn't sound more <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> in the three games leading up to Pat Mahomes' injury against Detroit, Indy, and Houston, uh, fifth easiest defense, 11th easiest defense, and fourth in, as, in terms of how many uh, points they gave up to the quarterback position, he put up less than 20 points to each of them. So, and, I, I, and so he's very touchdown dependent, right? Is kind of what you're getting at because the yards in those games were there. They just didn't have any touchdowns well, throwing the ball. I'm not even going to say that. I think it was back to back injuries. I think Tyreek Hill got hurt early. And then oh, yeah, he sprained his ankle early, right? So yeah, he was, and he missed yeah, time. He and yep. I think he missed Tyreek freaking Hill. Yep. And so I think that I part of me really think that's what it was. It was Tyreek Hill. The offensive line was rated 16th overall, but they gave up the second lowest pressure rate in in 2019. So great pass blocking line, 
Not well, you great also run blocking line. You also can't blitz him because they have a bunch of burners that'll run by everybody. Oh, easily. So the safeties are so far back, and yeah. <laughs> but we went we went over how Damian Williams essentially averaged less than three yards a carry. He didn't have Tyreek Hill, and his offensive line couldn't run block. They could pass block, so they passed a lot. So he had yards and stuff, but without Tyreek Hill, it's it's really hard to be dominant. And so I I understand how they also. Uh, had the the most difficult uh, schedule going into last season. That's a good thing. Having a difficult schedule? Yeah, so like they're going to be more competitive games where he's still going to have to show off, you know? Maybe, but you're also theoretically like, I don't know, facing the Patriots defense more and things like that, you know? Like there's there's two sides. There's two sides there. Yeah, Um, that's true. Do you have any uh, other reasons other than the Madden cover why you would take one over the other? Um, no. Okay. All right. Honest, honestly, like they're, they're so close and it just depends on, on who you want to root for. Um, yeah. So, I mean, Mahomes coming out two years ago, people were talking about he could be the best quarterback in NFL history. Um, so, you know, re- recency bias a little bit. You have yeah. Lamar who, who's also showing up. So, you know, between him Deshaun Watson and Mahomes, the AFC runs through those three quarterbacks if they don't change teams the next, you know, 10 years. And unless unless Ryan Tannehill wants to say something about it. So. <laughs> Tannehill thrill, baby. So I, no, I feel I, bad for what they did to Deshaun, but yeah, we'll get to him. Yeah. So I I don't think there's that big a difference between the two. I think it's just preference. Um yeah. you know, if if you have four points for a passing touchdown, I I think it's Lamar. Um Probably just know because how your of the, league is scored, right? Just, just because of the repeatable rushing yards to your point, uh, he does have a higher injury risk of the two for sure. Oh, so, you did not just say that. What he who missed time last year, Lamar or Pat Mahomes? Pat Mahomes with an did. injury. I'm, I'm just saying he's going to get hit more, so theoretically, he has a higher risk of getting injured. He's not getting hit when he's juking people and doing spin moves and running 80 yards. I'm I'm just, I mean, you want to talk about guys that got hurt? Because that's what my top 12 list is, is guys that got hurt and were doing great or yeah, guys that didn't start bad. until they were into the season. Like, yeah, it's like it's Drew bad. Brees got hurt. He's a pocket guy. Big Ben is a statue. He got hurt and missed time. <laughs> he's a pocket guy. Uh, Matt Stafford, statue, pocket guy. They all got hurt. Mahomes got hurt. You know who didn't get hurt? <laughs> Lamar Jackson. Ma- stop Mahomes, like people need to Mahomes stop saying is, Lamar's gonna get hurt. Ma- Mahomes is not a statue though. No, he's not. He's just as shifty, and I wouldn't be surprised if he had a non contact injury too. So I mean, I, I don't know, man. I I, I disagree. Just, theoretically, I, there's there is a higher <sighs> and this isn't even theoretical. There is definitely a higher risk of Lamar Jackson getting hurt. Okay, but you had like five or six other dudes that were all pocket guys, all get hit, all get taken out for multiple games. And Lamar Jackson played a hell of a season last year without getting hurt. Yeah, it's it comes down to preference. They're both great. Um, yeah. Wait, we were just saying negative things about the best. Are we allowed to do that? I, I, no, don't, so I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, Lamar needs if, to work on his game. It's still not complete. <laughs> yeah, the the only thing that you could say negatively about Lamar Jackson is that a supporting cast just isn't as good. Maybe so, we'll see how good Hollywood Br- Brown looks. Yeah. Well, yeah, but he, still, he's just one guy. Like their their next receiver. Mark Andrews is, isn't just a guy. Yeah, but okay. So hear me out. Their next receivers are Willie Sneed and Miles Boykin. Sneed. I, I yeah, I, yeah. That's mediocre. You're right. Yeah. So so the the talent around him just isn't as good as it is around the homes, which you know plays a part. So you you have Tyreek Hill. Is that is that true though? What do you mean? You think Watkins is like head and shoulders above Willie Sneed? Yes. I think Watkins is super mediocre. He had like one or two good games and it was because Tyree kill was out. Yeah, but he was, he was hurt. He's always hurt. I mean, yeah. I was like Sammy Watkins though. Yeah. So Tyree kill, Sammy Watkins, Travis Kelsey, Nicole Hardman, all burners. Like, so okay. Okay. So ho- Hollywood, McCall, Mark Andrews, Kelsey, 
I mean, you just you just compare you just compare their number one wide receiver to the Chiefs' third string receiver. Okay, 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 but but also, I I uh, yeah, I, I don't have a whole lot of defense going for me on that one. No, I, I, don't know. I think McCole Hartman's really good. Is uh, honestly is what I was going no. for. Oh, okay. So, but either way, the the skill position players for the Chiefs are so much better. So for that, you know, for that reason, that that is why I would I would pick Mahomes honestly, just because the talent around him is better. Theoretically, they have a better coach. Andy Reid has been doing this for hey for man, a they both just won Super Bowls. I yeah, but like I just I would I would prefer to stay with Kansas City um, offense instead of instead of Lamar. But again, 1A, literally 1A, 1B. It's not 1-2, it's 1A, 1B. And then for me, there's just a tier slice there yeah. where, ev- where everybody else is substantially below those two. Yeah. Um, so talk to me about Dak. Uh, he's our consensus number three. Yeah, they're... So again, back to back to weapons, right? So Amari Cooper, I, I know we talked to, talked about him being a little bit overrated. Um, getting that huge contract, you know, is he as motivated this year? Good question. He was hurt last year, though, um, and I believe he was still a top ten wide receiver last year. Uh, yeah, he was number nine, so that's pretty good. Uh, Michael Gallup was really good, and then their first Got round pick came back is and their, he's still good. Right, their their first round pick is their third best wide receiver in CD Lamb. Oh man, um, is he freaking good too? He's fast, uh, and I mean he's replacing Randall Cobb, who's like thirty four at this point. Um, and so their their offense is going to be opened up a lot more. Mike McCarthy at the helm, uh, who historically has had a really good fantasy quarterback. I know it was Aaron Rodgers in his prime. So, but let's. I mean, how much? Yeah, this might be a little bit of a reach, but. How much worse is Dak Prescott right now than Aaron Rodgers was in his prime? Oh it's, my! It's, it's okay. somewhat similar from a from a from an like output talent perspective, right? Strictly right. output, strictly, strictly stats. Output. Last year, I'll give it to you, but like, I would still I would still take Aaron Rodgers right now over Dak in a in a quarterback skills competition. Like accuracy, maybe, but. I mean, Dak Dak can run better. Yeah, yeah. Which you know makes a difference. So yeah, Dak is for sure number three. Yep. I mean, Dak Dak had a heck of a season last year. He gets Mike McCarthy, who the last time he uh, was coaching uh, had the offense with the highest percentage of pass plays run. So, your boy Dak Prescott is gonna find a way to throw. A way to throw more, I think. Uh, I'm, I am this much worried about Zeke because of McCarthy, and it's only it's only this much. In all of McCarthy's time in Green Bay, he had one RB one, and that was Ryan Grant. One time, so I don't know what that means. It's still Zeke. I still think the workload's there. I just think that Green Bay had like no really impressive running backs besides Fat Eddie for like a year, so. And it, like we said in the first podcast, legally contracted yeah, to call the man his name, yeah, Fat Eddie. True. Sorry, Thank you. one big guy to another. Love you, Eddie Lacy. Um. All right, so now we're about twenty minutes in, and we're taking the gloves off. The rest of the quarterbacks don't matter because for me, they're all in the same tier. There is Mahomes and Jackson tier one. You have. Dak Prescott tier two by himself and literally everybody else could be ranked number four to like 17. Honestly. Okay. They, they could all end up in the same 13 spots. There's not that big of variance between, between any of these guys, in my opinion. All right. Well, I'm glad that your opinion's over because now it's time <laughs> to talk about, now, now it's time to talk about why Tom Brady is easily the number four quarterback and and might be low at four. Wow. Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston was quarterback five. And I don't know if any if, if everybody knows this. If you're listening to fantasy stats and information in at the end of May, beginning of June, you know this. 
but it's laughable. The guy had his own 30 for 30 special last year. <laughs> 30 touchdowns. I'm, I'm 30, stealing crab legs, right? And, yeah, he's stealing crab legs because he threw 30 interceptions and they kicked him out of Tampa Bay. <laughs> Golly. All right. Tom Brady in his career, his illustrious career, averages 10 interceptions a season. Do you think if Jameis only threw threw 10 touchdowns or 10 interceptions last year, he would have been the the quarterback two on the season. Those extra 20 interceptions matter. And uh, I don't see Tom Brady throwing 30 picks. So there's that. Tampa Bay was seventh in passing percentage. Over 62% of their plays were pass plays. Yes, they drafted Keyshawn Vaughn. I think he's going to be a fine running back, but man, does Bruce Arians like to throw the ball. And uh, why, you know, you you get rid of a, I think a viable quarterback average, maybe, maybe slightly below, but he has a cannon of an arm in Jameis to go get, Tom Brady at what 42 years old. So they they have a beautiful playoff schedule outside of the first week, uh, which is at home against Minnesota. I mean, Minnesota traveling, you know, maybe Tom lights it up anyways, but then at Atlanta, that's a track meet at Detroit, another dome. I love warm weather and domes in my fantasy playoffs, ladies and gentlemen, especially at the quarterback position. Um, 21st ranked defense. Everybody, they gave everybody up Everybody points. loves Dome, just for the record. Every, just oh, 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 wow. We're off to a hot start. Hot start. So I, I think they're going to keep giving up points. I think Bruce is going to want to keep throwing, and I think Tom is better than Jameis, and Jameis was the quarterback five last year with throwing 30 picks. So Tom, I I don't think he has to do a lot to be the quarterback two, or, or, or t- in the top three anyway. So, do you remember when Peyton Manning was on the Broncos and oh all this, no, and like all of a sudden he just like died, looked looked really old. Yeah, he was a corpse. His ball. He, okay, first off, I feel like you're insulting Tom Brady by comparing him to Peyton Manning, even though they're both Hall of Famers. Yeah, it, whoa, that's not Tom that's Brady not has six different. rings. How many does Peyton have? I think he has two, right? I th- he has two and one. He didn't really even win. It was the, the Broncos defense. <laughs> and but I think again, it was this. That, that is exactly like Tom Brady can win the Super Bowl this year just because he's Tom Brady and, and still has a play cannon. smart. Like, yeah, but that no, no, no. So I disagree. I don't know if he necessarily still has that cannon because he made a lot of mistakes around the goal line last year for the Patriots where I'm not sure if Belichick trusted him 100%. Yeah. And so, and don't get me wrong. I know Mike Evans is there. I know Godwin's there. I know mm-hmm. Gronk is there. I, like I was the going to say, do you know why he made mistakes around the goal line? It's because Rob Gronkowski was on a beach with college chicks starting some beach party TV show thing and Brady didn't have anybody to throw to and... So Edelman had a bazillion catches and was yeah. like the only weapon. Like, I, I don't there. know. I'm I don't there. know. I'm if you don't saying, get the guys. I'm just saying you could see him and Drew Brees. Like when, when time hits you, you think and it's just, over. No, I'm just saying it's, it's possible. The, right, right, right here. The, that that when, maybe you don't know when it's going to come. That the cliff is steep though. And you don't know it's, when it's going to come. I'll, I'll right. talk about this. I'll talk about uh, one cliff. I know a little bit. I, I know about a little more intimately is uh, Brett Favre. I had him. I had him the year after he went to the NFC championship game and lost against the saints. And I was, and he was, he was mythical. He was like a mythical old legendary goat, you know, that just didn't stop putting up numbers the year before for the Vikings. And so I take him and I was on the wrong side of that bet, man. I, I was, he was downhill in a hurry the whole season. I think I dropped him after like the second or third week. And yeah. And, and Sidney Rice wasn't healthy anymore. And yeah. You know, and Percy Harvin, a lot goes into that. Oh, some but familiar I, names there. There you go. Um, so yeah. I, yeah. I got the, some old dudes. I got some old dudes up here. Yeah. You can't. So like 
part of fantasy is you have to make sure to not be on the wrong side of that. Yeah. And so, like, do you really want to put your faith in taking Tom Brady in in the let's say sixth sixth round, seventh round? Um, I mean, I think you wait longer than that. I don't think he's going to be. I don't think Tom is going to be the fourth quarterback take. Yeah, but that's where you have him ranked. Yeah, true, true. That's where I have so him ranked, like, but I don't think that's where you can get him. Right. So, and again, to my point, four to like seventeen, you know, minimal, minimal difference between all these guys. So yeah. Like if you if you can just wait, you might as well just wait. I got some that's guys in my top twelve. I think that are free. <laughs> yeah, that are that are not going to get drafted. Absolutely, one hundred percent. I mean, I agree. I mean, we, uh, Mr. And Matthew we both have guys outside of our it. top twelve that are not going or that will get drafted. Yeah. In, in that eighth, ninth, tenth round. Well, not on only that, but somebody outside of everybody's top 12 is going to finish in it that nobody drafted. You know, Correct. That, that happens every year. Correct. Um, so Brady, the, the end could be near. I, I hope he has one, one more good year. He could go on the revenge tour. Uh, you know, I, I have him at six, so it's not like I think he's going to suck. But yeah, there, and there, that's there one is, thing I guess I want to talk about with each of these now that we're starting to differ is I have him at four. Alex has him at six. And our consensus ranking, because we disagree so much on all these next guys, uh, he ends up consensus as the fourth overall quarterback. Correct. So, I mean, it's it's because of his weapons. I think he's good. Yeah. Bruce Arians is, is super aggressive. I also just want to throw out, how, if you had to guess, how many more passes do you think Jameis Winston had than Tom Brady last year? Pass attempts. Attempts? Yeah. Jeez. Uh... 200, 150? No, 13. Oh! So, like, Tom Brady threw the ball a lot, but he had a thousand less yards than, than Jameis did. I, and I know it's their type of offense, but Tom Brady uh, historically has not been a down the field passer and I does was a lot say, of it's, crossing it's, routes and it's things seven like that. yards to Edelman compared to 30 to Godwin. That, I mean, that's, that's the difference. So, right. Is so Tom, does he have the arm yeah. strength to throw the ball downfield effectively all year? We'll if he's out. scoring every time or, you know, every other time that he gets the ball and it's their drive and he manages them down the field more compared to the big plays, I don't think it matters because you know what he's not going to do? He's not going going to, in your fantasy football championship game, go out there and throw three freaking picks in the first two minutes of the game, and then you lose by 10 points because he's not Jameis Winston, ladies and gentlemen. Not that it happened to me, and I'm still salty about it. <clears throat> All right. You'll be okay. I promise. All right. Who'd you uh, have for, it for? For, for me, uh, I've already alluded to it before. Big fan of Kyler Murray. Uh, he had those 544 rushing yards last year. You know, I'm all about the rushing yards. Um, we, we talked, we've talked about Lamar, um, getting those bonus rushing yards, it automatically increases your floor. So yep. he, he was a rookie last year. He had 20, 20 passing touchdowns. Um, he's adding one of the best receivers in football in Deandre Hopkins. Yep. Um, you, you get another year of cliff. Cliff Kingsbury running the show there, Kenyon Drake um, in charge, but you know, Fitzgerald, Christian Kirk, a lot of weapons. They have good weather. Uh, they're in the NFC West, which is going to have a ton of points between the 49ers, the Rams, and the Seahawks. Um, so, yep. for that reason, uh, Kyler Murray for me is number four um, because of the rushing yards and just the really high upside of. Um, having DeAndre Hopkins, you know, Deshaun Watson finished number four last year. So really what's the, I, I know there's a talent difference yeah, between, between Watson and Kyler Murray, but if you take Hopkins and take him from Watson and give him to Murray, there's no reason why Murray can't be number four. Um, I will also preface that by saying Kyler Murray was number eight uh, overall as a quarterback last year as a rookie. So yeah, um, I, I think the talent's there. Um, so I have them before. Yep. And I'm glad that you brought up the eighth overall. Um, and the eighth overall finish there for Kyler Murray. I, I don't think there's anything more you could ask for in a rookie. Um, what I will say is while he finished eighth in total points, he finished 12th in average, averaging less than 18 points per game last year. Um, he has a, he has a decent playoff schedule. He's at, 
the Giants, you know, the worst, one of the top three worst defenses, um, and then home against Philly and home against San Fran. In his 16 games last year, 10 out of 16, he put up less than 20 points. In the other six, he put up more than 20 points, but less than 30. So he had six good games and three that I think would have disappointed you if he's your full-time starter and you're not switching or playing matchups and flirting with the lit waiver wire at least a little bit. He's number seven for me. Um, like I said, he finished eighth last year, 12th in average, seven for me this year. It's solely because of DeAndre Hopkins and what that means for that offense in an air raid offense. They had good guys. They had above average receivers in Christian Kirk, slightly above average, I think still in Fitzgerald. Um, they drafted a bunch of receivers last year. It didn't really look like any of them had great rookie years, but I mean, again, receivers never really have great rookie years. I would not be surprised if Kyler Murray has the same sophomore year breakout that Jared Goff did. It would not surprise me in terms of just raw production. Now, what I will say is he was a rookie. He made a lot of rookie mistakes. Their offensive line isn't that great. It's rated 22nd overall. Um, they only had, however, they, they had the, however, they had the sixth best pressure rate. Only 18% of their pass plays, they were pressured. Now him being a rookie, we're talking about rookie mistakes. They gave up 48 sacks of those 48. How many do you think were charged to Kyler Murray and them being his fault? Uh, holding let's on say, to the ball. Yeah. Let's say half of them. Yeah. 23 out of 48, which was by far the most in the league charged to a quarterback for it being his fault. I mean, there were times when I watched some Arizona Cardinals games because I was high on him going into the season. But, you know, as a rookie, you only have so many expectations. There's only so much you can expect. And, and, he, just, it, he, tried. and he has an entire offseason to learn, hey, what can I do better? And instead of holding on the ball, yeah, potentially, potentially it's him running the ball instead of taking yeah. a sack or doing or, I don't know. Somebody coming back to him like DeAndre Hopkins and helping you him, you know, yeah. like, like there's that. So yeah, I think is if he can just cut down on that and cut it in half, you know, and, and not lead the league and sacks that are his own fault. I think Kyler Murray could have a really good season. Yep. Obviously you get Kenyon Drake compared to whatever happened to David Johnson last year. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he finished in the top half of quarterbacks. I have him at seven. Uh, Kyler Murray comes out to our number five overall quarterback. And what I think we're going to do, instead of talking about who we have at each number, I want to talk about our consensus rankings. So one through five are Lamar, Mahomes, Prescott, Brady, and Murray. At six, our consensus is Russell Wilson. Alex, why don't you tell us about Russell Wilson, where you have him? Number three quarterback last year, 31 touchdowns, five picks. Um he has Tyler Lockett, who's always good. Second year of DK Metcalf, who turned into one of the best possession receivers in football uh, from a, uh, you know, had great hands. The dude's an absolute freak. Uh, so can't, can't say enough good things about him. I think he's a sleeper for definitely a, a upper end wide receiver two this year. Uh, so Oh, I think I, Metcalf. Uh, to me, he he could he he could be he uh, could he, be a wide receiver one man. He could like yeah, he's so, insane. So with you know Russ is really good, especially if Chris Carson fumbles and like it would be so nice if they let Russ just be Russ. Yeah, because they take the ball out of his hands so much. What I wrote that, what I wrote down is they want Pete Carroll wants to control the clock and play defense and run the ball. But they can't figure out how to play defense, so Russ always takes over in the second half. Yes, <laughs> like it's that true. was that was the team last year. Like just completely. Sometimes and sometimes you know what? Sometimes they blew people out and they ran the ball. And in those games, Russ didn't put up twenty points. Yep. I think if you were a Russell Wilson owner last year, you were probably frustrated. Even even though he finished a third overall, he, yep. he averaged twenty and a half points per game. Almost two thirds of his game. He put up less than 20 points. Uh, in 16 games, six of them were more than 20 or 20 points or more. And of those six, only two were more than 30. 
And going back to Lamar, uh, Lamar Jackson went over 30 in seven games. So, I mean, so it's just, it's so hard, man. Lamar was just so good. Um, but going back to Russell Wilson, you said it. They like to run. That's Pete. That's Pete Carroll's MO. When he got there, they were a pass first team and Russell Wilson was unstoppable, you know, top four or five guy in the league in fantasy points. And he's had spotty performances. He can still do it. Like, that's the frustrating part is, you know, he can do it, but he just doesn't really get the opportunity as much as you would like. So you're going to have up and down games where you're super frustrated in those easy matchups where you think he could go off. But it's only real. like to me, it's like unless they're being blown out, Russ is, I don't know, he could be frustrating. Yeah, it's like it's almost like Pete Carroll. If let's just say he was coaching like the Miami Heat in like 2013, and he he just had LeBron standing in the corner until he needed him to take over, and had Shane Battier like yes run run ISOs the entire game. Yeah, like if if you just let Russ be Russ, like they win. And I mean, they were what a goal line play away from being the number one seed in the NFC uh, last year. So, um, or no. Was it number one? I don't know. Either way, yeah, they, real close. You know, they're they're really good, and I I just wish they would let Russ cook. Because if they let him cook, I I think he'd be three or four. Um, yeah, but be, but he's he has to be discounted because of how much they run the ball. Yeah, and so for that reason, we we have him at a, a little bit lower. Yeah, six overall in our combined rankings. Uh, let's let's go into number seven, which is. Carson Wentz, and I, I, I'll get this party started for Carson Wentz. Um, I've never seen a quarterback do so well, let alone finish in the top 10 in scoring with having absolutely no weapons and no defense. Now, they traded for Darius Slay, great, great cornerback from the Lions. Um, but let's go through this injury list because it is lengthy. They lost Aguilar to two games, Corey Clement, Zach Ertz was questionable for several games. Deshaun Jackson uh, finished the season on the IR, as did both Alshon Jeffrey and Darren Sproles. You know what that leaves you with? It leaves you with high school starters, you know, comparatively and talent wise. I, I can't believe that he even turned in a top 10 season. Uh, he averaged just a shade under 18 points a game. He threw for less than 20 fantasy points in about, you know, three quarters of his games and uh, more than that in uh, the other the other 25 percent. He did have two games. Uh, excuse me. Sorry, that was my my next guy. Uh, he's, he threw for less than 20 fantasy points in about 70 percent of his games and in uh he threw for between 20 and 30 points in the other 30 percent of his game so he had three games at 18 or 19 points Uh, right there you know for me i'm shooting for i want 20 points at least on my quarterback that's like that's my bar if you're below that i'm frustrated especially if you're going up you know somebody that goes off for more than 30 so they had the number one rated offensive line last season per fo- pro football focus. And that's where all of these offensive line rankings are coming from. It's a uh, pro football focus and all five starters graded in the top 10 at their position and only one graded out outside of the top two at their position. So fantastic offensive line, no weapons. Eighth easiest schedule going into the season in terms of win percentage playoff schedule. You get the Saints at home at Arizona. So a nice dome at Dallas in week 16. Another beautiful dome. I'm liking it. I'm liking it all. I just, I want health. You know, I think he could easily be a top half of the league guy if, if everybody's healthy. Well, I mean, he for sure is. Yeah. The fact that, the fact that he was number 10 last year is incredible. 27 touchdowns. And I mean, if, if we really want to go into it, who was he throwing to? He did not have a thousand yard receiver on his team. His leading receivers were Zach Ertz at 88 catches. Dallas Goddard was second. And I was going to say, Sanders. that's what he threw to. He had to throw to the tight yeah. end. Everybody else and, was gone. Right. And, and Miles Aguilar Sanders. Aguilar dropped it. Yeah. Miles Sanders had the third most catches on their team. So, I mean, Alshon, Aguilar, Greg Ward, 
Like people who? were starting him in, in championship weeks at the end of last year. Yeah, they were literally the only guy that they had. So, you know, the fact that he did that with nobody, you know, I, I've never been that big a fan of Alshon, even as a bear. I just feel like he was always slow. Um, yeah. But D- Deshaun Jackson, is he going to stay healthy? Great question. I have no idea. They did draft Jalen Rieger, I believe is how you pronounce Rager. Rager. Reminds me um, of Game of Thrones. Ragon! Never watched Game of Thrones. Except for <laughs> oh my God! The, Ladies and the, gentlemen, turn off no, the podcast! The, Alex's so, opinions no, are now I, irrelevant. I, I did watch one episode of Game of Thrones. It was the Battle, battle of Winterfell. Okay, alright. That's, so, that's a decent one to watch. Yeah, I think that was the only good episode of the end, uh, the last season, if uh, based okay. on what everybody else is saying. So, but I was going to say you didn't watch them all, so how would you know? <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just going We're just throwing out say. opinions. Yeah. Throw, <laughs> throwing them out. Hey, all right. uh, so, sorry, there's no Starbucks cup on my desk to, uh, oh my God. In, in this episode. So, how do you hey. watch one episode of the whole series and you know the Starbucks cup meme? That's I'm impressed. Know, I'm impressed. I know. I don't want to brag, but I know everything. Alex Krogh, a.k.a. Meme God. Yeah, just give it to me. So Car- Carson Wentz, uh, that, you know, going to be a top 10 quarterback this year. Yeah. Uh, we have him ranked as such. He was last year. There's no reason why he shouldn't be this year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, moving on to number eight, Mr. Breezes. This I'll, is uh, all you. This is all you. Okay. All this, right. This yeah, is so not, I have, this is I not have Breeze. Me. Consensus number eight. I have Breeze all the way up at number five. And Mr. Alex Krog here. Uh, how far down do I have to go to find him? Number 13. He's 41, just for the record. Yeah, Don't okay. But like, if you look at Drew Breeze, has he ever really aged? I mean, he has the skin of a baby. Has he ever gotten hurt? Yes. Than, well, yeah, he has a scar on his face. Like, he got hurt once. <laughs> no, no, like he was out for a good portion of last year. Yes, and I can't I wait also, to talk about it. I will also point out that, and just just before you start start talking him up, yeah, my eyes showed me that Taysom Hill was a better quarterback than Drew Brees in that playoff game against the Vikings last year. Oh yeah, and that's and that's all I'm saying. The, yeah, like the announcers were talking about it. So. Yeah. I'm just saying that you might be seeing the end of Drew Brees, and so why would you spend? Yeah, he's going to retire out. after he gets another Super Bowl this year, and then it'll be the he, Taysom Hill experience, and they're the all going to go to garbage because Taysom Hill sucks. He's a great but, tight end, and that's fine. But I'm just saying, I, I don't know if Drew Brees can throw the ball 50 yards, and that, he doesn't have having, to when he's completing 80 percent of his passes. Yeah, that would go like four feet in front of him. Doesn't doesn't matter. All right, Drew Brees. Go. Finishes quarterback 21 last year. Drew Brees Ooh. got hurt. Drew oh, Brees. I'm sorry, what? Can, can you repeat that? Drew Brees got hurt. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yep. Drew Brees got hurt. Before he got hurt, he was averaging 20, or uh, excuse me. In the games that he started, he averaged 20.4 points per game. It, uh, it was 10 games total. Of those 10 games, in eight of them, eight, eight of 10 games, he scored more than 20 points. Which, which means he was right at 20 points. If his average was 20 points and in eight of those 10 games, he scored 20 points. He was basically right at 20 points, which is so very I, consistent. I, yeah, extremely consistent. Yeah. I gave him an A in consistency rating because he was extremely consistent. I'm sorry. He didn't throw more single digit games and more 30 and 40 point games. I would much rather if I if I'm searching around for QBs to start and I know I can get 20 points a week and double digit rounds. Hello, Drew Brees. Welcome to my team. Uh, he d- he did only out of out of those ten games, only one game did he put up more than thirty points. You're so like giddy there. right now. I I can just I can feel you're like you're you're just like trying to just punch me right in the face on this. You you are enjoying this so much. Eight out of ten games he started, he threw he put up more than twenty points. Who do you have? I have Brees at five. You got Murray. Okay, I have Murray high too. But like at 13? I've, That's I've, disrespectful. I've, I've, I have Russell Wilson at five. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Excuse me. Russell Wilson at five. But at 13, it's just completely disrespectful for Drew Brees. 
The guy yeah, averaged health, health is it health is he concerned. averaged twenty and a half points per game. That's top five in the league. I understand it. I just think the end is near. Again, quarterbacks from four to seventeen don't matter. I, they're all grouped the same for me. But I, I have to rank them, obviously. But I, there's not that big of a difference between any of these guys. Consistency and getting 20 points a week matters to me. Playing in a dome matters to me. Um, you know, his playoff schedule is at Philly, at home against Kansas City, and Minnesota at home. I think the last two games could be track meets, and he has to put up a bazillion points to keep up. So you could be out on Drew Brees. I'm going to take him. I'm going to love it. And he's going to put up 20 points a week. And you're going to have, you know, somebody other than Lamar Jackson who has a down week and I'm going to have 20 and you won't. So there you go. Yeah, I like them apples that I I don't mind those apples. I will also say that they added Emmanuel Sanders during the offseason. Yeah. And they have Jared Cook. Yeah. So um, they they have weapons. Uh, Alvin Kamara is obviously he's on it. Kamara is okay. Yeah. uh, So he's. He's one of the best running backs from a reception standpoint. He had 81 last year, 533 Ooh. yards. I, I do think it's important that you do have quarterbacks that have receiving running backs um, because you, you can get a lot of cheap, easy yards uh, just checking it down. Um, well, everybody that. has those running backs. It's whether or not they actually freaking throw it to them. You know, and where yeah. is the running back in the pecking order? Right. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, Drew Brees, he'll be fine. Uh, I have them ranked outside of the top 12 only because I think that, you know, in a lot of games, they will get ahead because their defense is still really good. Their offensive line is one of the best in football. Um, and so with that, they're going to do a lot of running with La- La- Latavius Murray and uh, and Kamara. So, um, yeah, they'll be fine. But once they get up, they, they do milk the clock. Um, so for that, I actually have them. Outside of my top 12, because uh, this might surprise you, but I, I like some bad quarterbacks coming up. Um, and it's mm. and it's not because like the sole reason is because they're going to be behind in games and they're going to have to throw a lot. And, and I don't think Drew Brees fits that description. All right. So then let's get into our consensus. Number nine quarterback, your boy, Big Ben Roethlisberger. I like him, too. I don't. I had him higher at one point. I'm and then just, you had him lower. I had him higher. I had him lower. I had him super high. I had him low again. I got, I got mixed emotions about Big Ben. I, I think I need to go to England and sort that out. I'm not sure what's going on. It's just something I got to work through. Uh, I have been Roethlisberger at 14. And again, you have him at nine. So why don't you tell me about why? Big Ben is going to finish inside the top 12 this year. So Big Ben is much younger than Drew Brees. He's 38. Uh, he oh, is coming yeah. oh, yeah. I got to worry about those old guys. Oh, I'm so worried about him. <laughs> oh, I'm worried about those old guys. Brees. Uh, Brees is two, so high at number five. Oh, Big Ben can't possibly be number nine. Yeah. Two two years ago, Big Ben threw for 5,100 yards. Uh, yeah. That, what, that was with Antonio Brown. I was going to say, you know who's on the team? No, uh, Yeah, I'm aware. The number one wide receiver for like 10 years in a row was on the team. You know who's not on the team anymore? The number one wide receiver for like 10 years in a row. Yeah, no, I'm aware. I, I, I just think he bounces back. He, he was fine before he got hurt last year. It'd be a hell of a bounce, man. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't know what you want me to say. This is more than anything, just a gut yeah. feeling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which, which I think does go into it. Um, you know, if you look at some of the other quarterbacks that we have ranked a little bit lower than this, um, they don't really have the track record that, that he does. You, you have to presume that he's going to be healthy. Yeah. Uh, do you, you know, he does check down a lot to James Conner, uh, to Jalen Samuels. James uh, Conner is a high-end RB2, low-end RB1, by the way, people. Yeah. And I'm so, starting it now. I'm starting that hype train. So, it's... I, it's a gut feeling, honestly. Yeah, more, more than more than it is anything else. I got stats for you. Don't worry. Thank you. The Steelers last year had the ninth rated offensive line. The year before that, when Big Ben went off, they had the number one rated offensive line. They were rated third in pass blocking last year. You know what went wrong last year? Mason Rudolph went went wrong last year. 
I think it was in podcasts like one and we've done nothing but hammer this poor guy. I mean, maybe not a poor guy if he's out there calling people slurs and names and things you shouldn't be calling people. Yeah, don't do that. All right. Yeah. Let's no, let's not do that. People we're we're above that. Um, th- He was who, and then they had a guy named after an animal, an aquatic bird, duck, something, duck, d- duck, dip, hodges. dodge, dip, dip, duck, dive, dodge. I uh, one just a quick pro tip if you haven't recently go listen to the ducktales theme song um because <laughs> uh, the the su- sunday night football had that as a had that as a outro uh after he scored a <laughs> touchdown against the chargers no they really, did not yeah they did so like just go listen to the ducktales oh theme my song. god i need to figure out a way if i can figure out a way to sorcery roll the clip we need to roll that clip that's amazing yeah so Ducktales. Yeah, so Ducktales. Um, but a little bit more about Big Ben and why I'm a believer. I haven't met 14 just because Antonio's gone and it's been a year and he's 38. That, that's why I haven't met 14. Do I think I, when I first made this list and I did the gut list, I had him at like six. <laughs> like before I got, before I started thinking about well Antonio and all this, they have the second easiest overall schedule this year in terms of win percentage. Playoffs at Buffalo opening round. Maybe you want to stay away from that a little bit at Cincinnati. That's going to be a train. And then at home against Indy, maybe there's some weather and maybe there's a little bit of weather in these games. You know, we're talking December. Um, Second rated defense in his year that he went off. He threw uh, for less than 20 points in seven games. He threw for more than 30 in two games and the, the rest of the, the final seven games were in the middle. So maybe a little more inconsistent than you would like for throwing 5,100 yards and all those touchdowns. Um, but, but still he has a ceiling in week one of last year, granted he, his fantasy output in week one, he got hurt in week two and fa- his fantasy output in week one left a lot to, to be desired. Yeah, he, dude, was, he was hurt the first week and they just weren't saying anything. Yeah, yeah. But against the Patriots, he, th- he threw the ball almost 50 times. There's not many quarterbacks that are going to have the leash or the ability, you know, to throw f- that many times. It's just, uh, there's, there's only a few. If he's healthy, like healthy, healthy, and, and Juju shows up, and Deontay Johnson, you know, who had the, the best separation rating for, of, of, I believe, any wide receiver last year. <clears throat> I don't know. The ceiling's there. All right. Let's move on. Number 10. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. So this is my number six overall. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry about this one, guys. I'm, this I- is... This is perhaps wrong. perhaps underrated at number six. This oh, he's so good. This is so wrong. Ooh, I'm getting hyped up. I am hyped up, ladies and gentlemen. Number six, my number six, our number ten, and that is Ryan Tanathrill, because that's what he is. He is Tanathrilling, and I am Tana freaking thrilled right now to talk about Ryan Tannehill. This is so bad. Oh, it's so good. Everybody wants to hate on him because he was trash for so long. You know why he was trash? Because he played for Joe freaking Philbin and Adam Gase. And Adam Gase is the worst coach to ever Adam Gase. And everybody that's bad is called Adam Gase like, okay? We don't know why he's employed. And freaking Tanithrill was stuck under him. And just like everybody else that was stuck under Adam Gase, just got so much better when they went to greener pastures. And I tell you what, the pastures are green in freaking Tennessee this year. Golly. I like freaking Ryan Tannehill eighth overall pick out of Texas A&M. People think he's a bum eighth overall pick. He's not a bum. That was nine years ago. I don't care. I'm just saying. Okay. So hold on. Hold on. Just, just for no, clarification. I'm not done. No, 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 I'm gonna, no, no you're not interrupting this at no, all. I, Absolutely no. not. Hold on. Ryan Tannehill was the quarterback hold too. Hold on. Just, just real quick. <sighs> 
Mitch Trubisky was drafted second overall a couple years ago. Does yeah, that, that was make a mistake. Him a good quarterback an because he was drafted. No, he first? was. That was an awful. That was awful. I'm sorry. You're right. My, my point is irrelevant. Thank you, Mitchell Trubisky is not good at football, ladies and gentlemen. I have been saying it for years now. I'm All just right. saying you you can't support some because he was a first. But some round people pick, think he like, was good, so maybe there was a little bit of sprinkling, and then he just got stuck under Joe Philbin and freaking Adam Gase. Okay. Now what I was saying is that. <clears throat> this is so bad. It's not bad. It's freaking great. From week 7 to 17, he averaged 22 points per game. 22 points a game is the quarterback two on the year. The reason that Ryan Tannehill finished as quarterback 22 is because he didn't start until week 7. He, I mean, he, he got like a spot start maybe the week before, but it, come on. Week 7 to 17, averaging 22 points a game. Of those games, 10 games, half were above 20 points, half were below. Of the five games that were below 20 points, four games were 18 or 19 points. So if you're, you're, talking, you're talking 9 out of 10 games getting 20 points or more, and, and really only having one. <laughs> Alex isn't having any of it. Only one game of having one clunker. They have the 14th ranked defense. They have the number eight overall offensive line with a well-rounded performance. He has a playoff schedule of at Jacksonville, not afraid at home against Detroit, not afraid at Green Bay in the championship game. Okay. Maybe that one makes me a little nervous. Um, strength of schedule, middle of the pack, 13th easiest this season. Give me some freaking Tannehill, man. No, the world's going to hate it. I'm not freaking scared. Okay. I'm just not freaking scared. Tana thrills here. And it's going to be a Tana thrilling kind of a freaking fantasy football year. Cause he's going to be free. I just think he's going to be free. I, maybe maybe not. Like him at six. I have him at, I don't know. I think you could get him be- between the eighth round and like the. He's going to go 13th. undrafted. You think he's going to go undrafted? Yes. Well, he won't because he if should. I miss out on Lamar and Pat Mahomes, then I'm going to draft him because I know he's going to go late. And I, I don't care. I, I hope our league wait. listens to this. I cannot wait for you to be starting Ryan Tannehill. In nine out of 10 games, the dude put up 18 points or more. Nine out of 10. He didn't have a down. He had one down week. Who's he throwing to? How, AJ how, Brown. How, how many other skill position players can you name? Delaney uh, Walker, it, AJ Brown, Corey Davis. Three. I don't think Delaney Walker is there anymore. I think he was hurt. And he, I think he was hurt two years ago and he came back. I don't know. I think Delaney's still there. 90, 95% sure Delaney's there. And also Derrick Henry, the f- mother, the mother of wrecking balls to set up any play action pass there ever was. Yeah. And he had how, how many catches did he have last year? It doesn't matter. Didn't need him. Yeah. He had 18 catches. That does not help. Yeah, Taylor Hill didn't throw to him because he was too busy running over people, setting up play action pass touchdowns. Spider two. Why banana baby? John Gruden would be proud. Shout out Jay Gruden. All right, uh, just real quick, let's talk about uh, who he played last year, and uh, I want you to tell me if this is a good defense. The Chargers. Uh, Above average. Tampa Bay. Uh, Below average. Carolina. Above average. Kansas City. Above average. He only had 19 attempts that game. Because Derrick Henry's good at football. You're going to start a guy that that has under 20 attempts. Yes. The next game he played. How many were touchdowns? Do the next oh, game okay. he played? Yeah, I'll take it. Was two tutties. The next game he played was against Jacksonville. He had uh, eighteen. He had eighteen pass attempts. Okay. He had two rushing touchdowns that uh, week. Uh, oh, so you're, you're telling me he's a? Are you calling Ryan Tannehill a double threat? No, I'm not. He's a dual none threat these, quarterback. None of these teams are good. He's not good. <laughs> He's not great. He's consistent. You don't. He's consistent. He's 20 points, 20 to 30 points a week is what he is. No. Okay. All right. Fine. All right. I had, 
Uh, Tannehill uh, consensus at number 10. You had Tannehill at 17th overall. So below average, ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Tannehill, 20 points. Sure thing. Average 22 points per game from weeks. Average 22 points per game in 10 weeks and was the quarterback two over that time. So there we go. That's what we think about last year's quarterback two. That's That's some hot hot fire. All right. That's so bad. Are we, are we, well, are we really going to keep doing a fantasy football podcast? Yes. Yes, we are. And I'm going to, is there, all right, fine. What's your board bet? He will not be a top six quarterback. Well, you have him at 17. So he'll be you want to, what do seven, you want to do? Be, Meet in the middle here? Closer, he'll be closer to 17 than he will be to six. So what's uh, six and 17 is 23 <laughs> divided by two. 11, 11, 11 and, and a half. half right. You, all right. Under over 11 and a half. You'll take the under? Yeah. I'll take the over. Assuming he plays 16 games. Or let's do points per game average. PPG. No. So then it doesn't matter if he gets hurt. Nope. No? Like, nope. he has to. Ed- he has to, if he's 12 or under for the year, and he has to play the majority of the game. Like, we'll, we'll know. If he's hurt early, it doesn't count. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, to me, like, a hurt. Somebody getting hurt should like, I don't know, to me, negotiate a bet. But okay, fine. Whatever. 11 and he's, a half. I'll take top 11 for Ryan Tana Thrill, and we're going to be Tana Thrilled about it. I, I mean, just you saying Tana Thrill <laughs> over and over again is, it's just making me irritated. <laughs> if he's on my team, it's going to be just, nonstop. You better I, hope I don't draft him. You better hope I get Lamar. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna be so obnoxious. I'm already obnoxious. Let's be honest. Oh my god! It's terrible. <laughs> All right, number eleven consensus. Number eleven, Deshaun Watson. You have Watson at number eight overall. Why don't you tell me why you like him so dang much? So obviously, he loses a great quarterback. Uh, Deshaun Watson was number four last year. He only had thirty eight hundred passing yards. He did have four hundred rushing yards, which helps. He had seven rushing touchdowns. Um, so they they do get him on the edge. Um, you know that they run a lot of shotgun, so a lot of read options uh, around the goal line. So he was yeah. number four last year. I, having him here to me is just fair. I guess, for lack of a better way to put it. Uh, the Texans, yes, DeAndre is gone. They do have Will Fuller. If He's never going to stay healthy, but if he does... He got hurt when you said his name. Oh, God. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Uh, right. So, Will Fuller is there. They trade for Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks is one hit away from never playing football again, but when he plays, he's fine. So, that, that's wide receiver two. Kenny Stills and Randall Cobb are your three, four there. So they do have weapons when Will Fuller gets hurt. Like you called Randall Cobb a weapon. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, you were just talking up Corey Davis. For, for Tannehill. I said, AJ Brown, AJ Brown is amazing. Yeah, but he's literally all they have. I'm just saying that Deshaun has weapons. So Jordan Akins, Darren Fells at tight end. Are weapons? Uh, yes. <laughs> where, are you, where are you like? Where are you like out here? Like, are you chucking axes and I got like guns and stuff? Like, what kind of weapons are we? Uh, Darren, is that a BB gun? Darren Fells has the third most touchdowns from a okay. tight end position, so that has to count for something. Wow, I can't believe you just pulled that stat up just like that. That's uh, honestly, I'm impressed. So, like, I, he's, he's one of the better quarterbacks in football. He's going to make a, make a way for it to happen. Is he very similar to Carson Wentz was last year? Maybe. I, I would say he has, better, he has better weapons around him, and I would say that those two from a skill position are about the same. So that's why Watson is, is more than serviceable um, in the spot. Okay. Uh, Deshaun Watson played 15 games last year. How many games do you think he put up less than 20 points? 
five, eight, eight, less than 20 of those eight. How many were single digits? Five. No, no, no. It's only two, but still two single digit games. <clears throat> Quarterback four average 21 and a half points a game, two single digit games, eight games, less than 20 points. Uh, playoff schedule at Chicago. You're not going to start to Sean Watson at Chicago. You're just, uh, you're not at Indy. I think you can start him there. It's probably a track meet. It's indoors it's in a dome at home against Cincy. For me, goodbye, DeAndre Hopkins. Goodbye, quarterback one. It's, he changes the field. I don't trust Will Fuller, who's also, I think, a game changer. He had a couple explosive games last year. He does every year, and then he gets hurt. He's got, you know, toothpicks for hamstrings. Um, wow. They have the ninth most difficult schedule going into this season. I have him at 16th overall. I'm just not, I'm just not there on Deshaun Watson. And so uh, they had the 20th ranked offensive line. Their offensive line was ranked 31st in the league before they traded for Laramie Tunsil. So all of that put together is an average quarterback's fantasy football season for Deshaun Watson this year. I have him at 16. Um, I think he's probably going to get drafted for where he finished, which is quarterback four. I think he'll be drafted too high. I don't think I'll have him on any team. And then I think whoever drafts him is going to get frustrated and probably end up dropping him at some point. Yep. Potentially. Um, which is unfortunate because he was so good, but Bill O'Brien, like he should go to jail for what he did to that team, man. I just don't understand how an organization lets somebody trade away to me, the number one wide receiver in the league and get David Johnson back for it, who was just a bitter disappointment last year. So. All right. I think that's enough about Deshaun. Uh, quarterback 12. Consensus. Matty Ice, Matt Ryan. I have Matt Ryan at 10. You have Matt Ryan at, let's go down the list here, 15. Do you want me to talk about why I like Matt Ryan? Uh, uh, you can. I mean, he, he's going to end up right in this range. He was 11 last year. He's got Julio, who is traditionally one of the top five wide receivers quarterback two or top three quarterback the year before he kind of does this ping pong thing you know fringe qb1 and then top three in the league fringe qb1 top, every other year for matt ryan there's a couple things i like though their offense uh through the most passes as a percentage of plays run last year than any other offense in the league he, there's a couple things I don't like though. <laughs> Finishes quarterback 11, 17.8 points per game in 15 games played. Cause he did miss some time out of 15, 11 were less than 20 points per game. He had two games above 30 points. The other two were in the middle below average offensive line. Playoff schedules at the Chargers at home against Tampa at Kansas City. They have the fifth hardest schedule this year in terms of win percentage. I think he's going to have to throw. I think Julio is going to have a ton of yards. I think Calvin Ridley is going to have a good season. They got they lost. He's just Hayden. so meh. I, yeah, it is. They, like, they lost Hooper, but they got Hayden Hurst. Yep. That could be a one for one replacement. I don't. I, if they get down and he has to throw, I could I could see a good season coming for Matt Ryan. Um, now, do you want to talk about anybody else? You got some guys that I don't have in my top 12 on yours. Is there anybody that you want to talk about on your list? Uh, Josh Allen, Gardner Minshew, or Jared Goff? You want to talk about one of those? And then I'll talk about one, uh, one guy that I have that we haven't talked about. Yeah, I, I have Allen, Minshew, and Goff in that order. 10, 11, 12 um, on my personal rankings. Um, again, 4 to 17, no difference. All these guys are the same. And I, I hate to keep bringing it up, but it, unless you get one of those top three guys, honestly, just wait until 
if, if you have a 15 round draft, you can literally wait until round 13 to take a quarterback. If you miss out on those first three guys and then kicker defense or defense kicker the last three rounds, because there's just, there's so many good quarterbacks. Here, here's why I have Allen and Minshew up there. Uh, Allen has a ton of rushing yards. He added Stefan Diggs. Um, I, their offense just, I, it feels like it's just got to be better. Also, they, they showed a lot in the playoffs last year, which is the last kind of look um, at teams that we have to go off of. And he looked legit. Adding Stefan Diggs, I think, is going to help that team quite a bit because um, the guys that they have just like, it's just so uninspiring. You got Cole Beasley, who's fine. John Brown's fine, but they're, they're not Stefan Diggs. So um, I, I know their playoff schedule sucks. We've covered it in the past, um, but Josh yep. Allen get, gets those rushing yards. And then I, I do like Jared Goff was one of the top quarterbacks in football last or two years ago. He had the same amount of passing yards the last two years. He had 10 less touchdowns last year uh, than he did the year before. I, them not having Gurley, I think Goff is going to bounce back um, because I, I, I rely on good coaches and I think Sean McVay is a good coach and he will make an adjustment to what teams are doing to him. And then Gardner Minshew is going to be a lot like uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick was last year where they're going to be losing and he's just going to put up stats. Well, yeah, he just doesn't have the talent that, uh, that Fitzpatrick has. Well, he doesn't have the beard, but I think he might have the. I think he, he might has have the trailer park mustache and the headband, though, doesn't he? Yeah. So, Gar- oh, Minshew Gar- Manny, I love you, Jacksonville. You stay classy. Minshew had the fifth most rushing yards as a quarterback last year. He had zero rushing rushing touchdowns. All the quarterbacks above him had rushing touchdowns of seven, nine, four, and seven. So, like, you can pretty much guarantee he's going to score at least a couple touchdowns if he keeps rushing that much. So that, that's kind of like a statistical anomaly. Um, he doesn't have Foles to worry about. He was quarterback 19 last year, splitting time with Foles. Um, so I can see Gardner uh, ending up in the top 12. All right. I got a- as bad as and as much crap as you gave me for Tannehill. I just want to put a- on all three of these guys. It's, I'll, I'll, just do, I'll just do a comment about each of them. Jared Goff. Played 16 games. 10 of those 16 were less than 20 points. The other six were between 20 and 30. Those 10 games less than 20 points, six of them were single digit games. That's how you lose fantasy football weeks. Including four in a row. That's how that's how you lose fantasy football weeks, and that's how you get cut from fantasy football teams. Um, Jared Goff, uh, what a freaking turnaround, man. As much as he went freshman year to missile up. Sophomore year, he came back crashing down last year. Um, that's Jared Goff. I, I don't know. I, you lose Brandon Cooks, you lose a weapon. I, I just don't, I don't know. Gardner Minshew finished his quarterback 19 in total points. He only averaged 16 and a half points per game. Um, he scored less than 20 points in 10 games. He played 14. Of those 10 less than 20 point games, two were single digit games. I just, I'm, I think Jacksonville starved for weapons personally. If DJ Chark is good, is good. I, there's nobody behind him. I don't want to hear about DD Westbrook. I don't know who their tight end is. Fournette's good if he's not punching people in the face. So their tight end is Tyler Eifert, who hasn't done anything in like six or seven years. Oh man, he was supposed to be so good. Remember he when everybody so drafted him? Good. Every, everybody drafted Tyler Eifert in the top six every year because he was supposed to be so freaking good for Andy yeah. Dalton, and then he got hurt. Yeah, he got hurt in that Pro Bowl and hasn't done anything since. And then last but not least, Josh Allen. Um, we we've talked about it, and I think we're gonna probably keep talking about it, you know, until he. The game, the season gets here. I think the Bills are going to have a really good start to the season. I just think that they're going to be like everybody's going to be on the hype. Like they're doing good. Every you know we got to start our Bills, and then the bye week's going to come and go, and then after the bye week, it's just going to be freaking hard. Um, their playoff schedule is miserable. Pittsburgh at Denver at New England. I don't know how you start a bill there. 
He'll he'll get you to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, maybe if that's the way you look at it. Yeah, sure. Maybe you could try and draft, uh, trade him and and get a guy for him. You know, somewhere around midseason. Maybe that's the strategy for the Bills. Um, right. Josh Allen was quarterback six last year, and I believe he's been a top ten quarterback all the years that he started because of the rushing yards. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah. If, it's it's but, not offensive to have him uh, in in the top twelve. No, but for me, I I don't look where guys finish in total points because I don't think it tells the whole story. It doesn't talk about Drew Brees. You know, yeah, but you're, you're nine out of ten games, averaging more than twenty points a game. When Josh Allen played all sixteen and only put up more than twenty points in six games, so and and, and Drew Brees isn't out here having two single digit games. And that's, that's just me. I mean, I, I look for consistency more than anything, and the guys that I can rely on. I don't know, Josh Allen and. He only went over 30 once. So it's not like it's not like he had a couple huge weeks either. He had six games over 20 points, one game over 30. One of those six was over 30 points. So he averaged 18 points a game, which means he had some bad games to balance that out and two single every, digits. So. Every every time you rip Josh Allen, another Buffalo Bills fan jumps through a table. All right. Uh, yes. God. If you're a Buffalo Bills fan and you jump through a table because you listen to our podcast, will you send it to me? I want to frame yeah. it. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yay! Yell like, suck my sacco when you do it. Like so- something original. Can, can can I just call out a couple things? I, I, this is I feel like running a little longer than we thought it would. Yeah, um, yeah, we're 20 minutes over. It's cool. The the couple guys that we haven't mentioned, the biggest one, of course, being Aaron Rodgers. Um, who who has finished as a you know hey, hey, as, Ron a, as a top ten top ten quarterback? Um, I I don't know why that's a gut feeling. He had twenty six touchdowns last year, four picks, uh, finished quarterback nine. Um, you know, I'm glad you talked about out. it because he's the one guy I didn't talk about either. Yeah, it, I don't I don't know why he's going to get drafted way too early um, on name recognition, and I think there's a bunch of guys that are going to be doing just about the same thing he is. Um, and yeah, there, there's just something off about that team uh, from the draft and just, it's just not giving good vibes and Rogers, you know, I don't know. He, he seems like he's got that FU attitude where if you're not all in on him, he just, I don't know. Yeah. What a difference a year makes for Aaron Rodgers. Um, Last year, last year they ran as a percentage of all their plays run. They ran the sixteenth. They were sixteenth highest in passing percentage at a so shave right, right at in a the sh- middle. A shave under sixty percent. The year before, with Mike McCarthy, who they ran out of town. We talked a little bit about it with Dak. 67.5% of their plays were passes. They led the league in pass percentage the year before. Aaron Rodgers, he might not miss Mike McCarthy, but his fantasy stats do. You know, uh, he played, Aaron Rodgers played in 15, 16 games. He did play all 16. Uh, 12 out of 16, 75% of Aaron Rodgers' starts were less than 20 points. In 25% of Aaron Rodgers' games, he scored more than 20 points. One of those four games was above 30. That's not what you want in a starter, especially where you have to draft Aaron Rodgers to get him on your team. He's going to get drafted based off of name recognition alone. Um, I don't think he's going to have a great year. Now, he might have a great, you know, he he might come one game short of the Super Bowl again. He won't. You, you know, you don't think he has a chance to make it back to the NFC championship? No. Okay. All right. Well, now I want to talk about my sleeper. Ryan Matthew Tanner Barry. Matthew Barry, get out of my head. Matthew Barry, get out of my head right now. Let me talk to you guys about this handsome young man named Daniel Jones. This is just atrocious, dude. Oh, Danny, Danny Jones, as I call him. 
We're we're friends. Daniel Jones was quarterback five on a per game basis from week eight on last year. Okay. And in that time, how many snaps do you think he played with Shepard, Saquon, Ingram, Tate, and Slayton on the field together? Zero. Zero. Z freaking row. His team was third in pass percentage. Almost two thirds of the plays that the, the, that the Giants ran were passes. He had no snaps with his guys on the field, and he was the quarterback eight, excuse me, quarterback five on a per game basis from week eight on. Okay. They, they did replace their coaching staff. Okay. Just win games. They're going to be down. 32nd ranked defense. I'm not afraid of them being down. Let's talk about let's talk about how we did when he did play. Let's get into the little little specifics. See, we got some nugs for you. He played 12 games. Four of the 12 were above 20 points. Again, he's only my quarterback 12 here. Let's not be ridiculous. He had three games where he scored more than 30 points. Alex, give me, tell me quarterbacks who also can say the same. There were, they scored more than 30 points three or more times. How many quarterbacks? One. What? What was, how many? Just, what? just, just one. Just one. Okay. So we know the ceilings there. We know how good he can be. Only Lamar Jackson had more 30 point or more games than Daniel Jones last year. And Daniel Jones is going to be freaking free. He is going to be free this year. May, I don't know. Matthew Barry caught it. He's calling him a top 12 guy. May, maybe it's going to catch on. Who knows? Maybe the hype train is going to get, get moving for Danny Jones. But I, I think Daniel Jones could very well have a, a, a top 12 year. Yeah. J- this year. Jason Garrett is his offensive coordinator. Okay. Just saying. Who was uh who was Dak's offensive coordinator last year? Jason Garrett. Okay, and where did Dak finish? Uh, I believe he was number two. Okay, I'm just. I think Daniel Jones could have a heck yeah. of a breakout year. I really do. So my my guys, my rankings are, are a little based more on per game average and not where they finished. I think Alex's might lean a little bit towards the latter of the two. I lean a little bit towards the former. I definitely have some non-traditional guys. You're not going to see Tannehill in very many people's top 12s. Uh, maybe, maybe in the bottom half of them, you know, maybe you'll, he'll start peeking in there a little bit when people actually start doing their homework on how well these guys did. But I, I don't know <laughs> if we- I'm going to draft a guy. I'm going to look for consistency and people that I can get late and not have to spend a lot of draft capital on Daniel Jones or not Daniel Jones, but you know, Drew Brees, people are, are just going to think that he got hurt and he's old. I think you're going yeah. to be able to get a heck of a discount on big Ben. And I think he could have a very good year too. So. Yeah. And it's there's, we've talked about, you know, 15 to 18 guys at this point. Yeah. Um, where you're going to be fine. If you have any of them, you're going to have to play the matchups unless yeah. you have one of the top guys. And so if, if you don't have one of those top three guys, you, you're probably going to be looking at spending an extra bench spot to have two quarterbacks and to be trying to plan ahead for matchups uh, and things like that. So it does have to go into your roster construction if you don't have one of those guys. Yeah, I mean, as far as roster construction goes, I mean, you're making enough for it elsewhere. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because because yeah. you can wait so I, long to realistically. Take one of them. And I talked about this. I talked about this too in a previous podcast. If you don't have, if you don't have like a reliable week in week out starter, top six guy, then you're streaming anyway. Like yep. you have to constantly be looking at matchups and who's on the waiver wire. And because because we love nuggets and sauce, my nugget for the week is after waivers clear, look and see who was dropped. Look and see if there's a nugget for you. You know, there, there's always guys out there that got that get dropped that shouldn't have been. So, Alex, any final thoughts as we wrap up our uh, minute 90? 
Wow. Long one. Sorry about that. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll try yeah. to bring more stats next time. Uh, J- Jason was just so giddy. Uh, I needed to let him let him get it all out. Um, Too much go I, juice. Yeah, I, I do want to say that we fired our social media coordinator. Um, so you're <laughs> welcome. You're welcome for doing that. How dare um, you do that two hours before the show? Well, I mean, it happens sometimes. So I, I just wanted to put that bug in everybody's ears. No so respect. Our social media gets gets a little bit better here shortly. Um, but otherwise, um, yeah, I just hope everybody's doing good in in quarantine land and. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a crazy time and we're talking about fantasy football and doesn't really matter because we don't know if there's going to be football or not. We hope there is. So, yeah, we don't know if there's going to be football. So, all right. With that, thank you everybody for watching. Shout out to all of our first responders, everybody in the medical field. Um, thank you guys for listening. We are available to listen to on every platform that you could possibly imagine. Please follow us on social media. We are at the FF Sackos on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. We are probably almost as chain of thrilling as we were tonight. And with oh that, my God, stop. I do.